full moon is going to be in Aries on, um, da -da -da -da, sorry, on October 13th. And, um, we'll have, it'll be the sun in Libra, the moon in Aries, uh, Mercury and Venus in Scorpio by that time. Pluto will have gone direct. So we'll have a lot of new energy to work with. And very interestingly, we've pulled the page of cups. So, you know, even though, um, Full moons are very much about like completion and getting to the ends of things. We're also seeing, you know, opportunities for new things to get popping, especially in terms of relationships. So we're going to be maybe, you know, looking at something that we've been wanting, that we've been aiming at, that we've been hoping to attract, that we've been, um, have had our eyes on, you know, so that could be, you know, finding a, a friend group, finding a community. It could be attracting a partner or, you know, lover even, or, um, somebody to experiment with even, you know, like it really can be just a huge expanse of types of relationships. It could be a, a collaborative partner. It could be a business, you know, thing. I really, for me personally, I already have something on my calendar that I know is going, this is going to be basically preparing me for that kind of a new level of relationship. Okay. But there's something with the page of cups that we need to be very, very aware of. And this is an energetic state. So when we're talking about water, we're talking about a very feminine element. It's, you know, very receptive. Cups are definitely, you know, open vessels. You fill them. I think about like fulfillment when I'm thinking about cups, because for me, you know, our emotional states have so much to do with our level of fulfillment. Our level of fulfillment has so much to do with whether we are aligned to what we think and believe. So it's all kind of contingent with one another, but it doesn't just stop at our emotional states. Our emotions are basically the symptoms of whether we're fulfilled or not. Okay. So this card is very much about the wisdom that comes from being like super open and super receptive. And it's interesting because, you know, for the beginning of this month, really, we're getting messages about the super masculine side of things. Like the ace of like wands is so fucking masculine as is the ace of swords so we're getting and and the magician is is fucking masculine as fuck too it's very much about you know progenitor creator maker ha make it happen uh go after it get it get it done like pursue you know um initiate you know, get started. So the pages are about new beginnings as well, since they're that very first card of the court, but they are feminine in nature, even though the pages are for some reason represented by a young boy. It should really be a, a young girl, but whatever. Well, it should be a maiden because it's very primary feminine energy. So the primary feminine is all about being receptive, taking in information, taking in knowledge and understanding. Listening is going to be a major key for this full moon. So we may have experiences with people because there's a lot of that Pluto energy involved in that full moon chart that, you know, surrounding that full moon, we might be getting into situations in which there's, there's the potential for conflict. There's the potential for disagreements, the, the potential for fear or lack to be kind of motivating how people are communicating with one another. Because at the end of the day, you know, people get really nasty and I'm, this is worst case scenario, but I like to go there because it's important when we understand like how much wisdom we can get out of experiencing these things. But it's important to understand that when people are their nastiest, it's really driven out of a fear of not getting what they want. Okay. So in order to, I think, really be actualizing a turning over of basically enabling the, the the completion that comes with a full moon, the letting go, the release of the way we've been and welcoming in a new way of interfacing with relationships is very much going to be us, us showing up in any of those kinds of situations 
as we want to be, as the page of cups. Because what this energy really is, is about looking and seeing what's there and seeing what comes out and what we are being presented with as a gift. Okay, because like, let's go into the imagery of this card for a minute. What we see is this, you know, this young boy like looking at this fish. I mean, like behind him, it appears to be, it could even be the ocean. You know, you have no, you know, gauge of the shore. So think of how expansive the ocean is and how tiny that fucking cup is. If you go down into the ocean and you put like just one cup full and you get a fish, right? Like that's kind of a thing that like you might interpret as lucky or like really being like in the flow, right? So this is essentially an attitude to take towards our relationships in order to close the chapter on how we were presented with conflicts in the past, especially. So we, if we come at this from understanding that people move in their harshest, smallest, most limited ways when they are the most fearful, most insecure, most afraid of not getting what we want, we can look at this situation as an opportunity for understanding, as an opportunity to give them the full floor, as an opportunity to fully hear others. And this is something that I think, you know, I'm getting on multiple levels from the guides right now where it's like, you are serving in so many ways what you really say you want when you show up to conflict like this, where you're looking at them as you in this moment being upset, expressing that, even if you're expressing it in a nasty way, this is a fucking gift to me. This is an opportunity to completely open up and be like, this is exactly what I needed right now. This is exactly what I need to hear. This is exactly what I need to know about what your deepest fear is or what you are really concerned about getting. Because if I were to truly listen to you, I could see what it is that you genuinely value. I could see what it is that you're the most worried about not getting. I could see where your deepest insecurity lies. And potentially, if I'm open to receiving that as the gift that it is, the gift of your vulnerability, even if it comes in a negative or, ugly, let's say, ugly package, right? If I have the humility to recognize where people get to those levels, especially in our relationships, like if you're in a relationship, relationship with somebody, the, the chances are they don't totally, they're not totally terrible for you. They don't totally hate you. They probably really love you. They probably really care. But we need to understand that everybody is only showing up in relationships to the level of which they'd shown up for themselves. That's literally the whole vibe here. And if we don't understand that everybody's got a different, you know, angle of truth that they are really experiencing in a total way, like, for instance, if they're projecting something onto you, they are fearful of that being real for them, or they're fearful of what that implies about them, right? And if we are really open instead of, you know, ready to like, cause the negative, um, double feminine is just has no capacity to connect with their own truth and the awarenesses of who we are. And, um, you know, the kind of, well, I know what's right for me and I, I've, I've discerned what's good for me, right? When we are truly connected to that, that level of balanced masculine energy, now we can really hold space for someone to come at us to be rude, to be nasty, to be unnecessary, to say too much, to, you know, get, get harmful in their language, right? Like, it's not that you want to say like, hey, I'm a punching bag and you're free to do that with me. That's not what I'm saying here. What I am saying, though, is like when people are just projecting onto you, right? Not necessarily calling you nasty names or being abusive with their language, but all of us do this. All of us, and you could click characterize it as abusive, but I don't think that's helpful for any of us because all of us, when we are not yet ready to interface with something about ourselves, we project it out where we project it on the nearest mirror. And a lot of the times those are our closest relationships. So if we come at this with that wisdom, that knowledge, that understanding, and we can remain open to holding somebody in the totality of who they are, right? Like, like what I was talking about at the beginning of the read, how conversations about boundaries have kind of gone into another kind of realm where it's like we're 
we we want to just say like that you're doing the thing wrong and you're crossing my boundaries and because you've crossed my boundaries like you're out you're blocked you're whatever now there may be certain situations in which that's absolutely appropriate to do like say somebody brand new like and they cross your boundaries and it's like oh shit like it's this is new. People are usually on their best behavior. So you see nothing wrong with that if that's how you're already behaving. So in certain situations like that, maybe it is appropriate to just be like, okay, like you already crossed my boundaries of like how we get something started. So I'm just not going to engage anymore or I might block you or I might like whatever. Fine. But if you've got a established relationship with somebody to behave like that, you know, to just cut them out. It's, it's the sign of a weak mind and it's the sign of somebody who is not taking up their magician's role in turn, in terms of their own personal fulfillment, their own, their own personal cups, their own emotions. If we can really, if we expect people to hold space for us to have emotions and us to have our shadow times and us to project and us to not be fully healed and us to have issues still and us to be imperfect, you got to realize, like, we, we can't have boundaries that don't allow other people to be imperfect. Do you get what I'm saying here? It's like, it seems almost like we want all this grace, but the way a lot of people are talking about boundaries kind of talks about, like, get grace, don't give it. Because you've been, you know, people have walked all over you for you performing grace. But really what that is, is really just, you know, people pleasing and you cowering away from confrontation. So that's the same thing as someone coming to you nasty. You need to understand that. If you cower away from any confrontation, if you cower away from expressing your feels, your needs, your desires, and your wants with your, your friends, your, your family, your partners, your lovers, etc., you are the one who is participating in fearful, you know, projection ish behavior just because you're not being belligerent or conflicting doesn't mean that you're not moving from a space of fear so it's important to understand that and not to judge how somebody comes at you and actually be able to hold space for that if y'all have this relationship and again if you can look at the opportunity the experience as a gift as an opportunity and and ask yourself what can I learn from this this must be exactly what I need in this moment what is this telling me about people what is this telling me about this person who's in my life what is this telling me about you know my own needs and desires what is this telling me energetically because if I am open and really absorbing and willing to learn you know pages all have a very like open mindset kind of um uh, underground message where it's like, let's have an open mind here. Let's, let's hold space for whatever this experience holds, whatever this is. And if I remain connected to myself, grounded, yet I am understanding of how emotions work in me and how I need grace for my shit and all of that. And I'm also connected to the, tr my truth and I'm taking the opportunity to align with it while also recognizing that Someone who has a completely different truth, there's nothing wrong with them. That's just where they're at. And it's not personal. It's based out of their fear. And it, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, we've got to release this whole, like, I want to be so special to someone. I mean, like, I get, I get it. And one day you will be. But if, like, we move from, like, needing to be special, you're going to, like, really have a hard time in relationships. Because, like... On one level, you're not at all. Like who you're in relationship with is like they're having a relationship with themselves on your face. You know, like you are the mirror and, and we are having relationships with ourselves but with, you know, some other medium. And the more we are aware of that, the more we are clear about that, you know, I think the more stable ground we can hold while we are still holding space for someone to have their experience with their emotions, their, their experience with their fears, their experiences with their inadequacies, their, their insecurities, etc. And again, this is not about just taking it. It's about accepting that this is giving you valid information. And in some circumstances, guess what? How they'll behave might be crossing your boundaries, even as family members, even as a lover, you know, so how this happens, this is what you must remain open to. But again, you don't want to be that 
ultra negative imbalanced feminine where you're taking all of it on you're internalizing it you're personalizing it you're making it about yourself that is not what anyone is ever doing and that's where I was trying to get with by saying you're not special and neither is the person that you're having that relationship with they are not special in terms of how you feel because how you feel is based on how you feel about yourself how they feel towards you is based on how they feel towards themselves. And so if we just take those experiences as what I need to know about how to move from here instead of this is about me, this is a personal attack on me, this is them, you know, showing their true colors or they're them showing how they really see me or anything like that. If we release all of that, which is old narrative, that's that's super and that's toxic femininity. Toxic femininity personalizes, makes themselves a victim, um, internalizes and absorbs all the negative energy and doesn't do anything with it, right? So we don't want to be in that state, but we want to be super connected to our own truth and our own masculine energy so that we can with grace hold space for other people's, you know, emotional discharges their emotional projections because at the end of the day if we can't hold space for that in relationships no one can hold space for that for us we have to practice what we desire and at the end of the day i know i will have friendships and and partnerships that i'll project on and i'll do that to my parents and i'll do that to my brother and sister and i'll do that to all the people that i really really care about in moments of less awareness or you know in in new circumstances or you know, if fear is really hard triggered, like I don't expect to never do that again with the people that I love the most. What I do expect is that we all love each other enough to be able to hold space for the truth of what humans are and that we can learn from each other's shit instead of take it all personally and allow that to, to create wedges in between us and to separate us for forever. You know, because that's what I, I see happening in relationships is, is we take, you know, people's inadequacies and people's imperfections personally but then when other people take us not showing up to our fullness personally we really don't like that and we're really upset we're like this wasn't about you you know it's like it's my shit da, da, da. you don't want somebody to do that so we have to act out our healing we have to show up the way we want to blow up right if we want to grow up you know, we got to show up in a certain way, a new way. So that's the thing. We need to be releasing the way we dealt with conflict and fear in relationships in the past. That's what we're releasing. That's what we're letting go of um, for this full moon. But we're also being initiated to new ways of seeing relationships, new ways of feeling about conflict, new ways of holding space, um, and new ways of seeing all circumstances in relationships as a teacher and if we have that open mind and we keep aware of what a human is but also all of our responsibility now we really have all the data that we need to make big choices so like because like sometimes i said sometimes it results in the creating boundaries for somebody or saying i can't spend time with you or you can't be in my life anymore or I can't be in your life anymore or whatever. Sometimes those are the things that come out of being open-minded and really listening to somebody. Okay? Because a lot of times we, if we're serving what we are attached to, like serving an end result, serving keeping that relationship, serving keeping that specific person, then we are more tempted to not fully listen to us when they are expressing their values in a way that is clearly saying our values don't line up. Like, I don't agree with what you value in life and I don't, I don't, I don't want the same things you do. If we were ready to stand up for more of what our truth is, right? Instead of making ourselves the victim when someone expresses something that they don't want that we do, not giving ourselves and other people the credit for being the magician, you know, all that shit, all that leads us to being like really desperate in our relationship interactions instead of being like, you know, I'm not here to get you. I'm also not here to keep you. I'm here to see if this connection is expansive and, and collaborative for both of us. Can we both grow here? Can we get bigger than we were before? 
that to me is a huge sign of a positive relationship. And while all other things, you know, on the surface might seem like, oh, this isn't working, that they act like this, da, 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 da. part of love is accepting people fully as they are. And if you can see a lot of growth in the relationship and, and some positives that can help, you know, ease the burden of life, then you keep maintaining those kinds of relationships. Because like Bob Marley said, everyone will cause you to suffer. Love is about finding the people that are worth suffering for. And those are people who can also hold the space for you when you're projecting, when you're being insecure, when you're being weak, when you're being less than your best self, all of that. You want somebody who's also willing to learn from you and, and even learn from your shadow and even learn from the times when you are not your best. So we have to practice what we desire. We have to show up like the things that we admire if, if that's what we want to be attracting into our lives. And that also is the thing that's required to actually stir our emotional vortexes into a pattern that will attract that. You know, what our cups are filled with really does reflect our energy. So when we start to look at these situations like, what can I learn here? Let's be open-minded. Let's really listen to what they're saying without trying to come up with something to say, to make myself right, to defend my point, to defend my side, to convince them of something else, to convince them that they should just change their behavior and do something to make me happy. You know, let's release that and let's embody the fullness of looking at relationships as teachers and you know, mirrors. And if the reflection doesn't line up with our truth, then that we are meant to like throw that little fishy back and be like, okay, I learned something from this. This is not my fish. It is perfectly good and fine and beautiful to learn that it is not your fish and to throw that bitch back. And I don't mean throw somebody away, you know, but sometimes Sometimes we have to make a clean break and move on. And we'll talk about that in a second. 